Dave, you must paint Indrasta. You promised it six months ago. I command you, it is tabletop time. I'm Dave, and today I'm going to be painting a long promised video, Yngdrasta, the angel from the Dominion starter set, in a kind of unique way. My Stormcast Eternals army has always been inspired by Diablo. I grew up playing Diablo 1 and 2 and was absolutely enamored with those games. Specifically, it gave me a big love for the celestial archetypes. The archangels and Tyriel himself was a big part of why I love that whole theme of paladins and glorious angels. So when Stormcast Eternals were first released, gold clad armored warriors, I knew I had to make them special. And it is this video with Yngdrasta that I am going to create the absolute greatest representation of that that I possibly could have. This project is a labor of love and I can't wait to get started. Any other flying model in my army, I've always replaced with a dark cowled hood and painted their face jet black. This was an obvious homage to Diablo, including the color scheme of gold with white accents. But to make my Yngdrasta truly special, and feel more at home in the world of Diablo. The big part that needed to change was the wings. Now there's a bit of mixed feelings out there as to whether the Stormcast Eternals Wings of Lights or Feathered Wings would have been better. But for me, having already committed to the Wings of Light with Stormcast Eternals, Yngdrasta's Feathered Wings just feel wrong. They feel at odds with the previous designs that are already established. And I don't think she fits as well with the Stormcast Eternals because of this. Now the most obvious thing I could do to Yngdrasta to make her feel like she was from Diablo is change those wings. I'd previously dabbled with Oculus Mini 3D sculpting when I made the base for our large 40k squad member, which uh, we're filming right now by the way, so you won't have to wait long for more of those guys. With that knowledge in hand, I decided that I would create Yngdrasta's angel wings in that software. So Rob helped me set up the Oculus and I got to work. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Oh, what the fuck? I want out, I want out, I want out, I want out. Sculpting these wings was a challenge in itself. I was very unfamiliar with the software, having only used it once, and that was quite a while ago. Tackling the controls and doing as best as I could, I began assembling the noodle wings. So I learned very quickly that the sensitivity in the triggers would not allow me to smoothly change the width of these tendrils. What I did find was that if I flicked my hand and let go of the trigger, it would naturally gradiate away and to a sharp point. This required a lot of control Z trial and error, but eventually I managed to get the curve of the wings in a way that I was happy with. Once these were finished, I sliced them in half so I could print them in two pieces and then set about exporting them. I printed them up in clear resin and then after cleaning them, noticed that the wings had become a little bit foggy like frosted glass. This was actually perfect. Certainly a happy little accident this time. The frosted look was a lot more ethereal and also hid the attachment points of the supports onto the wings. There was one other benefit of the frosted wings, that they would diffuse light and make them look even better. Now there was an important reason I wanted them to diffuse light. I was planning on stringing this up with LEDs. Having never soldered anything in my life, I grabbed Rob to help me with this part. And we set about problem solving how we would string up these tiny LEDs into the Indrasta and hide them seamlessly. I really like the idea of not having to build up the base or create some kind of ridiculous battery pack. So we came up with a solution, which was to use small round batteries hidden in the scenic part of the display base. What have you got for me, Rob? So I unpackaged everything we should theoretically need, which is our battery container and a switch a battery and a single cool white LED. It's really simple. You're just gonna chuck your battery in here and then your positive, which is always red, needs to go to the resistor before it goes to the light. This is being your resistor. So we're just gonna gently jam it in there just so that they're touching. And then you take the negative end, which is this end, and we're gonna hook it up to this side. Oh, it, it's flashing, it's flashing. If we can get two lights. Glued onto those what, the bits where yeah. it's clear. Yeah. yeah, cool. All right, let's have a, I don't know, a soldering montage. Can you strip this? can strip anything. Mm -hmm. 
Once it was all wired up, it was down to me to hide the cables. I bunched them up and tried gluing them in a single cable down her back. Using hot glue points to secure the cables where I needed it, I knew I would actually have to hide these with some sculpting. For the cables that ran down the cloak of Yngdrasta, I created another one of those little Stormcast Eternal parchment scrolls, sculpting in some symbols that I copied off the ones on her front, and then carefully placing that down the length of the cables, flicking out the tail of it just a little bit to give it the illusion of movement. I used green stuff to sculpt out more of the tree, sculpting over the wires, encasing them and holding them, but also continuing on the texture in the areas of the tree and completely disguising those cables. With that done, I was very happy. The LEDs worked, everything was seamlessly hidden, and I was ready to go ahead and start painting the base. Now the basing on this model was a great opportunity to expand the concepts I'd used in my Stormcast Eternals video. There's actually a whole video on how I base my Stormcast Eternals, and you can check that out in the little card thing up there. I think it's up there, tiny little thing. Yeah, but there's a lot of elements in this base that I had room to explore that I didn't in the previous bases. For starters, the gamer's grass plants, I found they had a slight glossy finish that was a little bit at odds with the matte finish I usually leave my paint jobs at. So knowing that, I actually sprayed a matte varnish on the plants after shaping them ready for use on the base. This matte varnish was absolutely perfect. It brought that gloss completely down and made them fit even better into the basing that I'd done. Another little difference between this and the Stormcast bases is I actually 3D printed little mushrooms this time rather than sculpting them. If you do prefer to sculpt and don't have a 3D printer, they are super easy to make with some plastic hard rod and green stuff. And I go into that a little bit more in the basing video. However, as I do have multiple 3D printers, it was very easy for me to quickly churn off some cool 3D prints of mushrooms. The mushroom files were from a user called Palinor on my mini factory and they're absolutely fantastic. They also have a huge range of other scatter materials for bases, which is super sweet. Now the finishing touch on this base that really brings it all together is weathering pigments. The contrast dry brush effect on the stone looks really rough until I put on that nice burnt umber charred brown looking weathering pigment. With the base finished, it was time to move up and paint Yngdrasta. Now I won't go into a massive amount of detail into how I painted Yngdrasta because I've created an entire video on how to paint my Stormcast Eternal color scheme. But for now, enjoy this smooth montage of some of those steps being done. So two elements I did do completely different on this build is obviously the wings and also her face. For Yngdrasta's face, I used Black 3.0, which if you haven't heard of it, is supposedly the world's blackest paint, or it was until it was usurped by some other product, I'm sure. With three or four layers of Black 3.0, you can really see. The light catches maybe a tiny bit on the character's nose, but other than that, her face really disappears into the fabric around it, which is fantastic. For Diablo, that is exactly what I'm trying to achieve. As for the wings, I took them to the spray booth and used some Copic alcohol ink, and I used that to airbrush my model liberally. At first, passing the whole model over, leaving only a tiny area of frosted, uncolored wing where my thumb was. With that done, I did a few more passes, building up the blue towards the tips of the wings. <laughs> Finally, to hide the LED's direct light from behind, I cut the end off a spare knight Arcarum staff. We have a couple of boxes of Dominion and for anyone who plays Age of Sigma, you'll know that model is probably one of the least playable in the entire box. So I have no interest in having more than one knight Arcarum. Painting that up, it was time to glue the wings in. I used super glue for this and utilized points of contact on other areas of the model rather than just the back.
And as we shout out our new patrons who have joined us, I'd like to thank Slinger Bling Bling the King and Brad for joining up with our patron. Thank you so much. Your support means a lot to us and lets us tackle ever more ambitious projects. This was a super satisfying project and it feels really good to know that my Dominion box set is now finished. I really hope you enjoyed this take on Ying Drasta. It was a lot of fun. Final thank you to our patrons and our long awaited return to Age of Sigma has been happening. We've built our board now, I finished Ying Drasta and we're fairly poised for our next battle report. Yes, we haven't forgotten, but the post-production on these does take a while as we're still learning how to put them all together. So expect the Kill Team Battle Report out in the next nebulous period of time. And after that, we should hopefully have polished our processes and should be able to bring you the next Edge of Sigma Battle Report a little bit quicker. And thank you to everyone for leaving your comments. We do check out the comments. Obviously, Ying Drasta came up multiple times and we read it and we went, hey, we really should do that. 2022 is a year of delivering on all our awesome promises. So I look forward to you staying tuned and continuing to join us on our hobby adventure. And in lieu of an awkward outro for those who stay all the way to the end of the video, I've got a personal question for you. Favorite class in Diablo 2? Mine was Necromancer. What was yours? Nice. That's one banging angel, dude.